Hello, and welcome to Lecture 1 of the Human Energy Use Topic Unit in Phys 2104. In this video, we're going to take a broad overview of human energy use on the large scale, national and global. To start with, we're going to need some terminology. A key set of ideas and associated terminology are primary energy, secondary energy, and energy services. Primary energy are the raw, naturally occurring things, usually but not always objects, which contain energy in the forms, unprocessed, as we extract them from the environment. And so these are things like crude oil, sunlight, flowing water, uranium, biomass, which you might be less familiar with, but it's things like wood and agricultural waste and many other examples, wind, coal, natural gas, and so on. Often, however, these are inconvenient to work with, and so some primary energy sources tend to get produced into secondary energy, or what are called energy carriers. So these are transformed or processed, again, products, usually, which are more convenient, safe, or transportable than primary energy forms. So we turn crude oil into petroleum products, such as gasoline and diesel, we take most of these primary energy sources and convert them into electricity, and sometimes petroleum products also get converted to electricity, so we can convert secondary sources into other so secondary sources, hydrogen, and so on. Finally, our energy services. This sometimes goes by the term site energy. These are the end uses of energy, the things people actually want. Things like warm buildings, moving things around from place to place, lighting, maybe less obvious to you, but operation of machinery in places like factories and mines, and many other examples. You shouldn't confuse these with forms of energy or the types of physical energy that we've talked about. These are products or objects that contain energy. So crude oil, biomass, coal, natural gas all contain chemical energy. Sunlight contains light energy. Uranium contains nuclear energy. Flowing water is an object which is storing gravitational potential energy that we can then convert to other forms. And wind contains kinetic energy, which we can extract and convert to other forms. And similarly, the second en secondary energy forms are also familiar things like chemical or electric potential energy. The energy services are even more complicated and are often combinations, but some are simple. Warm buildings ultimately comes down to thermal energy. You might think that moving things around would be kinetic energy, but Actually, most of the time, the main thing we're fighting against when we move things around is friction and drag, and so really this is thermal energy as well. But it's not even necessarily so helpful to think of energy services as forms of energy, except that sometimes it's easier to calculate the demand for them when you think about what form of energy has to be produced to provide the service. On a societal level, all of these conversions of energy from one form to another coming from so many sources can get pretty complicated, and visualizing it is difficult. And so there are some diagrams that can be helpful. One is what's called a Sankey diagram, and these aren't just used for energy, they get used, used for things like international trade and all sorts of other things. But let's have a look at this one, which is showing the 2012 energy use for all of Canada. A Sankey diagram shows flows or transfers with the amount transferred represented as the thickness of a line. In this, notice the way it's laid out. All across the left side are primary energy sources, and then through the middle there are secondary energy, and in the end there are many uses, residential, commercial, institutional, industry, transport, and so on, but the only part that's the energy services is what we call the useful energy used in each of those areas. These energy services, or what this chart is calling useful energy, are 
the thermal energy in your home keeping you warm, light energy emitted from light bulbs, the electric potential energy running the computer that you're using right now, kinetic energy of spinning machines in factories far away, and so on. All the energy that we wanted. But remember that all of that involved a lot of transformations of energy, and most transformations of energy do not occur at 100% efficiency. And so we get this other part of the chart called rejected energy. That's the thermal energy from all those irreversible processes where energy is converted from one form to another. Note that a lot of the useful energy is thermal energy as well. For example, the heating of your home. And in the end, after it's served its purpose, all of the other things, like the electric potential energy running your computer and the light energy from your light bulbs, is all ultimately converted to thermal energy as well. I find a sand key diagram like this fascinating. It's Full of all kinds of little details, often rather surprising ones, such as, for me, the surprise of how much energy in the form of uranium Canada exports. You can do a lot of calculation from here. For example, if you look at the transport box here, we can see that we can get the thermodynamic efficiency of the entire Canadian transport industry from the information given right here. Remember, efficiency is what you get divided by what you pay. The box, 2574, is saying that 2,574 petajoules of energy were input into the transport industry. And the little outflow with 515 is telling us the useful energy that resulted. And so that gives us an efficiency of about 20%, which is about right for typical internal combustion engines, and so it's not surprising that that would be the efficiency of the transport industry. Let's check your understanding of the terminology of primary energy, secondary energy, and energy services. Take these things, coal, kinetic energy of a car, and so on, and match them to the correct type, primary, secondary, or energy service.